I don't always go to Walmart because I find it a big pain. However, I can get some really good deals there. And I was there a couple of weeks ago and I tell you right now, I almost got a, a whiplash in my neck. I was walking down the aisle, pushing my, my cart with all of my stuff in it. I was alone at the time. My husband and daughter were not with me. I was focused, I was getting what I needed. And I hear, I see this nice family, husband, wife, and son. Son's probably in middle school. And she asked him, asked the family, hey, what do you guys want for dinners this week? And I went, what? You're in the middle, like you're in the middle part of Walmart, already in the grocery aisle, the middle part. You've already gotten halfway there. There's stuff in your cart and you don't know what you're eating or what you're buying for. And I thought, okay, <laughs> Jennifer, realize not everybody plans ahead. Not everybody needs to try to stay on budget with their food. But it was one of those things that I just went, how does, how does that not seem like a good idea to plan ahead? Some people don't think about these things. So I want to bring them to you today to see if you can save some money. Even if you have the biggest budget in the world, why waste it if you don't have to? I have broken this video down into three parts. We're going to talk about tips that you should do before you leave the house, tips that you do at the grocery store, and then tips on when you return. So let's get started on the first part, which is what do we do before we leave? The first tip here is to know the stores in your area. When we moved to this area about five years ago, it's only about 30 minutes from the location we were in before, but the stores are completely different. Things are crazy, the difference in one place from another, even just stores locally around us. So it took me about three to four months to really get a good handle on the different stores in my area. I had to take the time to go and check them out, even if they were the same store in different locations. Find the one that's going to work best for you, that you know you can find really good deals at, that you feel comfortable at, and has the products that you typically use. From here, you need to create a shopping routine. How often are you going to go shopping? When I first met my husband, he would go to the grocery store for every single dinner. And that was because he grew up with his family being right close to a grocery store and they would just go get what they needed. Well, he at the time was not <laughs> close to a grocery store. It was a good 25 to 30 minute trip. I taught him what I was raised to do, which was go grocery shopping weekly. My mom and my grandmother would go together every single Friday, had their list and they would go up and down every single aisle. There were very few trips in between. Now, perhaps you go once a week or perhaps you want to set it up and go and do a big bulk shop once a month and fill in in between with fresh things maybe once a week. Find what works best for you. But first, finding your stores, and then second, setting up a routine. When you find your store or your stores, because you might use multiple as I do around me, we I typically rotate between four. I rotate between Aldi, which has very few select items. It's fantastic, but I do have to supplement with other stores. When I do get out and go to Walmart, uh, or a Hare's Teeter, or even a Food Lion. Most of the time, previously, I could not stand food lines, but we've had a, one open up near us recently, new, and they've done a fantastic job. So knowing those stores and making sure that you are logged into their loyalty programs. Now with this, I believe that coupons, paper coupons are going away. These are the things that we used to use a lot a long time ago, and then we had the influx of the extreme couponing and companies got smarter and they're going away from it. Most of the sales are now linked to loyalty programs so that they can have your information and send it, such as just your email address. But if you have that linked up, you can get those sales or those digital coupons. Now, I wanna tell you about a great tip that came from a fellow frugal YouTuber, Kate Kaden. If you aren't familiar with her, check her out. It's K-A-T-E-K-A-D-E-N. And she says to create another email address that you only use to give out to retailers. This is great because you never have to look at it and be tempted by the sell things that they give you, but you've got an email address that you can give so they can sign you up for those retail or for those loyalty programs. So check her out if you haven't seen it before. She has such a great uh, personality. Check out her channel. One thing that is going to save you on wasting money and having multiples and duplicates and things expiring because you have so many and you can't use them is inventorying your pantry. See what it is that you have. Then planning your meals. Now, this is not only going to save you money, but it's going to save you a ton of stress. How often, if, if maybe both of you in the household work, have you come home and heard, what are we going to do for dinner? The amount of stress 
less healthy food possibly because it's going to be quick. It wasn't pre-prepared maybe with fresh ingredients, less satisfying because again, it was thrown together last minute or you end up going out and spending, you know, the 300% more that it costs to buy food out than it does to make it yourself. Now, planning does not have to be difficult. This is our plan for March. And I actually wrote, I've been doing it the week ahead. I haven't been doing monthly planning. I'm planning the week ahead. You can see I did not plan here. I don't know what happened there. It looks like I moved things down and around, but this can get all kinds of wonky. This goes up on our little bulletin board. Everybody knows what we're having. And at the beginning of the week, when I go shopping on Saturdays, which is my routine, I will write out what we're going to have for that following week. Part of that is going through and inventorying that pantry and knowing what we have. That's one of the tips here is to plan around what you already have. You've inventoried your pantry, maybe check out what's left over in your fridge, what might be getting ready to go over, such as maybe the carrots are getting a little bit on the, on the softer sides. Maybe you can go ahead and make that for a dinner this weekend as a side item to go maybe along with a roast chicken and maybe a nice pile of mashed potatoes, which is always good I enjoy. So you can see that planning is going to go into, again, not wasting the food that you've had already in the pantry, in the fridge, then planning around that rather than just making brand new, fresh, out of the box meals every single week. You're using what you already have to start at the beginning of the week and maybe by the middle of the week is when you have those new, fresher ingredients that you've used. So from here, we wanna make sure that we're trying to do simple meals. Right now when prices are so high, experimentation and going on Pinterest and getting lost and you know, trying all these new recipes may not be the best thing for your budget if you're really trying to pinch pennies. And again, for us, the food budget is the second highest on our monthly budget. It is the second highest below our mortgage. Again, if you aren't familiar with us, we don't have any other debt, car payments, credit cards. We're paying off our mortgage quickly. So behind that, the highest one is food. It just is what it is at this point. It's the highest that we have. Now that doesn't mean you need to be boring. You can do simple meals that your family love, but maybe also once a month to give in to yourself, have where you try a new recipe. Go on Pinterest and find something, find something new that might be really good. And if it is, you can add it to your family favorites. Now, what is that family favorites? That is a master list of family favorites that you can easily use to meal plan. How many times have you sat there trying to figure out going, oh, this meal planning thing, everybody's talking about it, but you just can't, for some reason you have amnesia and can't think about what the meals are that your family loves. Sit there and jot them down. This is easier, made easier for us with my meal planning binder. I have a video all about this on uh, my channel. I will link it at the end of this one. But in here I have recipes that I've printed out and it's connected with my family favorites meal plan um, so that I can take anything from there or any new recipes that I've loved, they're all in one place. I can photocopy them from a recipe book or from uh, printing them off from Pinterest. I also keep copies of my calendars that I print out for a full year at the beginning of January. It's all in one place. So when I go, before I go shopping, I pull this out. From here, you're going to make your list and you need to check it twice. <laughs> I have many times not checked it and realized that I put something on there that I already had or I missed something that I needed. So check your list. Are you sure that you need the ingredients that are on it? Are you sure that you have all the ingredients you need to make the meals for that following week? All right, now it's time to leave the house and go to the grocery store. How can we save money at the grocery store? The first thing that I want you to do is get really familiar with the prices of the things that you buy all the time. Those are probably similar, the same things over and over on repeat. I made it a game one time trying to memorize the prices of a gallon of milk at five different places because I was astounded at the actual difference. There was a dollar difference in the difference of, how many times can I say difference, in the prices of a gallon of milk at one Walmart that was 20 minutes away from another Walmart. It just astounded me. I didn't understand it, but I got so familiar with the items that I knew I used and I picked up on repeat. What does this do for you? This helps you automatically know when you see a deep discount on something and you can stock up. Or when you see somehow randomly, let's just go with the price of eggs, it goes up crazy amounts. That was obvious, so it wasn't a situation where you had to, I guess, really record in your mind the cost of the eggs. But if you can remember these things, you can see the small increases. That might be a situation where you need to switch brands or maybe even switch stores. 
When you've planned your grocery budget and you are at the grocery store, I want you to create a grocery budget gap. This is what I call a gap between what your budget is and what you need and the expense of that. So let's say your budget's $100. Try to aim to spend $90 on the things that you need and have that $10 budget so that if you see something on deep discount, you can stock up on it and you didn't go over budget. Remember when you're at the grocery store to look up and look down. It's the items that are at eye level that are those that are the highest profit for the grocery store. So you're gonna find better deals usually per unit if you look at something that's a little bit higher or a little bit lower. Remember to pay attention at the checkout. Recently I talked about this in another video and the amount of stories and stunning amounts of mistakes at groceries that people reported having had at grocery stores was astounding. I mean, big differences. Talking about moving a decimal point where something was $4, it rang up as 40. Now you need to check these things, watch diligently while you're there. Don't let the pressure of a long line upset you. When you get in the car, check that receipt as well. Does anything seem out of place? You're a whole lot less, it's a whole lot easier to go back in if you're still in the parking lot than it is to drive all the way home and find that mistake. Okay, we're gonna hop in the car. We're gonna go back home. What can we do at home to save money? What can we do when we get there? Well, one of the things that we always do with our canned goods is right on the top of them because we have a pullout pantry, like one that opens like this and that has rolling drawers. So it's hard to see what's in there. If you have a walk-in, maybe it's not so hard, but we write a brief description on the top of canned goods, what it is. For this, GB, this is one of those things that my daughter who's six, we love to help her out or have her do it as a help out. It helps her with her writing her letters and as a, just a little chore that she can do that she actually really enjoys. And one of you mentioned also writing the expiration date. So I've started doing that as well. So green beans, they go bad, 1224. That way when I pull that drawer out, I can easily see the ones that I need to use next. When you unload your fruits and vegetables, take them out of the bags. The bags help close in moisture, which you don't want on them. Also, always make sure you do separate your vegetables from your fruit. Fruit gives off this um, gas called ethylene gas, if I'm saying that right. And what it does is help the fruit ripen. But if it's put next to vegetables, it also helps the, the vegetables go bad quicker. So keep them separate. Make sure you label your leftovers. This is very key to knowing what's in the fridge, when you made it. I put a brief description and when I made it. And one of you mentioned just using masking tape because at the time I had mentioned what I do, which is I take a little, one of those little small sticky notes that you don't know what to do with otherwise. Sometimes those fall off. I love your tips. So I'm going to be using the masking tape one going forward. That is certainly easier and it will stay stuck to the, bo or to the box or the container, whatever it is that I have. But if you have any more tips, leave them down below. As much as I hope you get benefit from my videos, I get so much benefit from your tips. Please tell me all of your genius hacks and tricks down below in the comments. This next one is new to me and I am loving it. If you have a vacuum sealer, let me know down below. For my birthday, I asked for a vacuum sealer. I got the one that had really good ratings at Costco and we are enjoying it. It is so cool because you could even vacuum seal chip bags or any of those bags to help keep the majority of the air out. I know I seem like a giddy little child on something that seems so maybe mundane or maybe you've used for a long time and known its benefits, but it's just like when I got the air fryer and I realized how genius that was. So I previously was very opposed to getting all these extra gadgets, which we don't have, but this is one that has great benefits. And Personally, the one at Costco is a great deal. So if you wanna check that one out, all you gotta do is go on Costco, look up Food Saver. It's the one that's got pretty good reviews. Being able to put something in there and seal it and pull all the air out, label it nicely and put it in the freezer helps prevent freezer burn, helps to keep it fresher for longer. You can buy things in bulk and take them apart individually and save them that way. You can take leftovers and individually portion out uh, the amount that you know you would eat for each meal rather than saving it all in one bulk and just put it aside easily. It, would, it takes up so much less room if it, than if it's in containers, if it's in these little freezer bags, and you can just pull out what you need. I hope this video gave you some tips to be able to cut your grocery budget too. We can only do so much, but maybe a few more ideas, we can do more. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you back for more videos.